life, the purpose of life, and I'm saying this as a happiness scientist, the purpose of life I discovered, which actually I was annoyed by this discovery because originally when I started the my happiness blog and all this research, my theory was that the point of life was to be as happy as you could. Happiness was a choice and I wanted my clients to experience it as often as possible. Welcome to Sincerely Future You, a podcast for female entrepreneurs looking to scale their business by mastering their time, money, and drama. I'm your host, Jessica McKinley, founder of What's Happening Coaching, a life coaching program that helps ambitious women like you make decisions today with the future you in mind. Hi, guys. I am sitting here drinking my Starbucks, actually. It's like the very last bit, but uh, I got an extra shot of espresso in it because Calvin woke up at 5.30 in the morning. Yep. So anyway, I just got off of a conversation with one of my clients and she is so incredible. She runs a business. She makes six figures. She has on paper all of the things in life that most people strive for. And she worked really hard for them and she continues to work hard for them. And she continues to stretch herself. Now, all of that sounds incredible, but let's not forget, she is a, in fact, a human being. And as human beings, we experience something called emotions. One of those emotions, super fun one, is anxiety. So I don't know if anyone watching this live or watching the replay experiences anxiety or suffers from anxiety, but I think that that phrase in itself is, is pretty interesting. Because suffering from an emotion is actually not a thing. We suffer from an emotion when we are not willing to experience that emotion. The resistance of emotion is what creates this suffering. There is an incredible author and coach called Byron Katie. She wrote a book called Loving What Is. And she says in that book, which I love, I love the way she phrases it, when we resist reality, we lose, but only 100% of the time. (laughs) And when she's talking about losing, what she's really talking about is suffering. Now, not all emotions are created equal, right? A lot of us would argue that we prefer to experience happiness over anxiety, let's say. And anxiety is an emotion that a lot of millennials and a lot of Gen Z people experience and that they say that they suffer from on a regular basis. Now, I think the worst part about this really, and what I want to explain to you is that the suffering is coming from your resistance of experiencing anxiety. And you're like, well, yeah, because I don't want to experience the anxiety. But when I ask my client, how does it feel in your body when you experience this anxiety? She didn't really know how to answer the question. She didn't know I mean, she did say that it was in her chest, she felt like, and when I was asking what body part, but ultimately she couldn't really describe it. And probably it's because even when she was trying to describe it to me, what it sounds like she was describing was the resistance of the anxiety, right? She said she had a tightness, you know, she, her breathing started to get erratic. It didn't feel, maybe her stomach was a little bit off and you might experience some of these things too. So what we suggested when we were talking to her, and this is a person that has a lot of high paying clients. She has a lot of, you know, a busy life of active social life, a busy calendar for her work. And she does not want to throw all of that out and sacrifice it. So actually she resists it more. She had a client that was booked and she was so nervous that she was going to experience this anxiety when she was with the client and like ruin this service that she offers that she wanted to cancel and not have the client in the first place because she was so nervous that she was going to experience anxiety, right? So she, the better her life gets, the more prospects she gets, the bigger her life gets, the more unwilling she is to experience this anxiety because she thinks the anxiety is going to cause her to be embarrassed or to lose business or to ruin someone else's life, all of these things. Now those thoughts actually create more anxiety, right? The anxiety about getting anxiety, that is the worst part. So one thing that I really highly recommend you do if you experience anxiety is to not resist it. And this is a first way that you can do that. Notice the way that you are 
holding your body when you experience anxiety. Probably your shoulders go in a little bit, maybe you're hunched over, maybe you have your hands together, you're kind of like, you go inward. Instead, what if you said to all of the emotions that are negative, not just anxiety, anxiety just is one emotion among many, and all emotions do is they send a vibration in our body, and it feels either comfortable and great or uncomfortable. When we resist that, that resistance gets doubly uncomfortable. So what if instead of that tightening that is being caused by the resistance of the emotion, you say, bring it on anxiety. And you say, how can I open my body up to receiving this emotion even more intensely so that it can process quicker? You say like, I'm willing to experience this. I want to notice and I want to get curious about what it feels like to experience anxiety so that I can just go back to Jess and say, This is what anxiety actually feels like. If you cannot explain it to me, it probably means that you've never really let yourself fully experience the anxiety. Because when you do, when you do let yourself process the emotion, it goes through you and it leaves. And then it's on to the next emotion. But the crazy thing about anxiety is it's such a vague emotion that it can last longer because we don't even know how to process through it. So we resist it. We don't even know what it is. So it thrives. That's the same thing with worry and fear. Worry and fear are also very prominent emotions that last a long time because they're so, they thrive on the vague. So I want you to be able to let it in so you can describe it to me. So the first way that you can let it in is physically. I just want you to And you can say out loud, do all of the things that are opposite to what you typically do when you experience this anxiety. So if you typically look down, I want you to look up. If you typically put your shoulders in, I want you to put them out. I want you to, instead of thinking the thought, oh, why does this have to happen to me? I want you to think, bring it on. I love that I'm a human being that is capable of experiencing emotions, including all of them, right? We cannot let emotions in, like open the door to being an emotional human being without letting all of them in. Life, the purpose of life, and I'm saying this as a happiness scientist, the purpose of life I discovered, which actually I was annoyed by this discovery because originally when I started the my happiness blog and all this research, my theory was that the point of life was to be as happy as you could. Happiness was a choice and I wanted my clients to experience it as often as possible. What I found out was actually the goal is not to be 100% positive emotions. The goal is, it's not a goal. The science of the way the world works is that life is always going to be 50-50. There is a yin and a yang to every emotion. So when you are opening the door to experiencing being human, you're opening the door to both positive and negative, And your willingness to experience any emotion is what allows you to be processed through them so much quicker. For example, I am going through a divorce and it is a painful emotion that does not feel good a lot of the time, an emotion that comes from my thinking about the divorce. And when I am experiencing some of this, it's uncomfortable and annoying. In fact, I don't want to be sad anymore. And so by resisting feeling sad, by getting frustrated about being sad, it actually feels way worse. I get more upset and more sad and more frustrated. And I can't process through this phase of my life until I'm willing to experience it fully. And that is the same way that anxiety works. It's the same way all emotions works. For some reason, because anxiety is such a vague emotion that comes, that seems like an emotion that just happens to you. Emotions don't happen to us. Even though it feels like that, emotions come from a thought. And that thought might be subconscious, which is why In sessions, I do the work to find the thoughts that are actually causing the feeling in the first place. You might think like, no, I feel anxiety and then I think thoughts. And it's probably true that you think a thought that causes the anxiety subconsciously and then you think a conscious thought like, why the fuck do I have to be a type of person that experiences anxiety? Normal people don't experience this. Not true. (laughs) I have plenty of clients, all of whom have successful businesses or have successful family lives or relationships, all different successful things. And they all experience anxiety in some form or another. I experience it in some form of another and there's nothing wrong with it. It is the human experience. So 
If you're just tuning in, I want you to go back to the beginning of this video and I want you to listen to the, your very first, I'm going to do like a series on this because I think that anxiety is not as big of a problem as we think it is, but it is supposed to be there and it's a very normal feeling to have. But when we make it a problem is when we resist experiencing it, right? So your first assignment this week, if you experience anxiety is to, when you start feeling the symptoms, I want you to notice what you're doing with your body and do the opposite. So like I said, if you're hunched over, I want you to stand up. If your shoulders are in, I want you to put them out. If your shoulders are up, I want you to put them down. If you look down, I want you to look up. If you're breathing quickly, I want you to take a deep breath. If you are thinking the thought, no, fuck this. Why do I have to feel this anxiety? I want you to say, bring it on anxiety. I'm willing to feel you today. I want to describe you. I want to know what it is so that I don't have to be so scared of it, right? When we are not willing to know something like a monster in our closet when we're a kid, when we don't know exactly what it is and when we're just like hiding from it, it's 10 times scarier. So I hope that this is helpful. Again, it's just one of the almost 100 tools I have that we work through and every tool is a little bit different and more helpful for the different client it is a kind of a custom experience. But if you really are curious and you want to be coached in this, or you want to do a one-on-one -on -one session, you can go to whatshappening.com and you can sign up for a one-on-one -on -one session, or you can join happening sessions where we do a lot of this in group work and we do assignments. But more than anything, if you just want to take away this free information, please be willing to experience this emotion, any emotion. It's all very normal and you will process through it so much quicker when you do not resist experience it. Being willing to experience your life is what makes it more enjoyable, right? All of it, not just the positive. Okay, you guys have a lovely, lovely Friday. Hey, hamsters. If you want to learn more about today's topic, head over to whatshappening.com forward slash podcast. That's what's happening. W H A T S H A P P Y N I N G dot com forward slash podcast. If you're a business owner and you're resonating with what we talk about here, what are you even doing? Come hang out with me over where the party's at on Instagram at what's happening. W Jess. Again, that's happy. H A P P Y N I N G and book a discovery call to see if coaching is your next best step.